Hello and welcome to the physics topic of circuits, lesson one, electrical circuits. So we're going to take a look at electrical circuits, um, where we use them, how we make up an electrical circuit, what flows through a circuit, and also how we can represent an electrical circuit with the different symbols. So first off, um, I want you to have a little think about how much you use some form of an electrical circuit each day. You've got three different images there. Uh, the middle one probably being one that you will relate to the most with a laptop, a phone or a tablet. Not forgetting that you may have already watched some television today. You're obviously using one of those to be um, taking part in this lesson. Electrical circuits really are an important part of everything that we do. But how do they work? What is the electrical current that flows through a circuit? That's a really important question. And you need to know that the current is the flow of charge through the circuit. We've got it represented on this diagram here um, with the little E's showing you the flow of electrons. So the electrons are the charges that flow through the circuit. They are negatively charged. And it, you've really got to remember as well that the current isn't used up. OK, the total current at any point in that circuit when we're measuring it, which we'll talk about a little later, um, is the same. Now, this isn't a circuit drawn using circuit symbols. This is just a diagram to represent those electrons flowing around the circuit. What you've got to remember is that the current flows around a complete circuit. That means there is no break in a circuit. So um, there's not a split in the wire. Everything is connected. We've already mentioned that the charges that flow are electrons. You have to remember, and this is important in chemistry and physics, that the electrons are negatively charged. And as we already said, the current isn't used up, it's the same at any point in the circuit. So not only is the current important, but also the potential difference. Now, you might use the words interchangeably where you have potential difference or voltage. We are going to use both. If we are talking about potential difference, you can also refer to that as voltage. Now, what you do need to remember is that the potential difference is measured in volts. And that's um, that's when it becomes really handy to remember the potential difference is voltage. OK, so to think about this and to learn about this, you've got to know how the current moves around a circuit. So you've got a diagram there um, and it's a simple circuit diagram. Think of it as if the battery that's represented with the plus and the positive and the negative, the blue and the red, um, acts as a pump. That pump provides enough force to push the current that we've already mentioned, the negatively charged electrons around the circuit. And the potential difference is the force that pushes that current around the circuit. Now, if you add more of those batteries, the pumps, the more force pushes, the more force there is to push the current around the circuit. Okay, so you can, and you can have more than one battery. If you think of different um, electrical items that you use, you think uh, using a remote control, for example, some remote controls take two batteries, some take three, and some work on AA batteries and some work on AAA batteries. They have different potential differences. Okay, and the key point there. At the end is the potential difference is measured in volts and also in brackets there you've got the symbol it is a capital v you've got to learn that you'll need to know that in key stage three and key stage four and you'll see it you'll see it um you might see it labeled on some appliances you might see it on the box um you might see it on the information when they're talking about main supply really important you know that okay so we've covered current and we've covered potential difference what you also need to know about is resistance. So how easy the current flows through the circuit 
is called the resistance. Try and think about uh, resistance being whether something resists something else. Okay, so uh, again, you've got a diagram there uh, that is using circuit symbols. Now, the bulb, I'll just highlight this here, this bulb here, the lamp, that's a component. The more of those components that you add to a circuit, the more the resistance will increase. If the resistance is higher, it is harder for the current to flow. Okay, it's not just lamps, they can be something as simple as resistors, it could be a motor, it could be a buzzer. The more you add of those components, the harder it is for the current to flow, and that's because the resistance is higher. Now you can calculate a resistance, the resistance of a circuit, if you know the current and the potential difference. This is something you're, you're expected to do. It's also something you have to do in more detail with trickier questions at Key Stage 4. Now, some materials are good conductors of electricity and others are not. The ones that aren't good conductors of electricity are known as insulators. So remembering that conductors will have a lower resistance, so the current will flow through the conductor, the material that is a conductor more easily, but an insulator will have a higher resistance. So it's much harder for the current to pass through that material. Okay, so you've looked at current, potential difference and resistance, all within an electrical circuit. What you need to be able to do now is to draw and represent that um, electrical circuit in the form of circuit diagrams using circuit symbols. Okay, um, we really recommend that you practice these, you learn these, and when you're doing them, do them in pencil. So first off, that one there is the bulb. So you've got a line, obviously the circle and the cross, and the line, that's the one that we most commonly used, along with the cell. You will see in a minute, the cell appear again but in a slightly different version to show you the battery obviously a straight line is just a simple wire now a straight line with a break in it is classed as an open switch we use those two dots um either side of the slant to represent the switches there so that you can see on a closed switch how a closed switch is different to a straightforward wire okay then a circle with an M in it is a motor. A circle with a V in it is a voltmeter. Now that's a piece of apparatus that will measure the voltage of the circuit, the potential difference, and it will measure it in volts. The circle with the A in it um, is the ammeter. That's the piece of apparatus that will measure the current flowing through the circuit. The unit that that is measured in are amps. And then this looks a little bit different. This here is a buzzer. So it's quite an easy one to remember because it's oddly shaped. And then finally there, you've got the battery. Now you need to be able to put together all of those into a diagram. So you might be given a question where it says, draw a circuit diagram using a battery, wires, two bulbs, and an open switch you would be expected to be able to do that successfully. You wouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to label them. You can label them, but they're testing that you know which symbol to use for which component. Okay, so it's important you learn those. Right, once you've done this, make sure that you do the worksheet. Obviously, if you get stuck, you can rewatch the video and pause it as you go to help you. Really need to make sure you know the definitions for current, potential difference and resistance, and also that you can explain how current moves around a circuit, and then that you can draw circuit diagrams using the symbols that we've got here.